Greetings, fellow Hoobians. Well, it's time to look at another Trouden story, and today we're going to look at the Faceless Ones. Here we go. The TARDIS materializes on the runway of Gatwick Airport. The Doctor, Ben, Polly, and Jamie emerge only to discover that they are in the path of an oncoming plane. They see a security officer coming for them, so they split up to flee him. Airport security confiscates the TARDIS after thinking the police are playing a practical joke on them. Polly ducks in the chameleon tourist agency hangar, where she sees Spencer kill another man and report to his superior, Captain Blade. Polly flees and runs into the doctor and Jamie. After telling them what she saw, she brings them to the hangar. They examine the body and the doctor knows that the victim was electrocuted by a weapon that can't possibly exist on Earth at that time. They leave to find someone in authority and Blade captures Polly without the doctor or Jamie noticing. He hides her along with the corpse before Jamie and the doctor return with skeptical airport authorities. Alone again, Spencer revives an alien a face is screened humid with prominent veins. Nurse Pinto brings in unconscious air traffic controller Meadows and connects him to the alien with a machine. The alien transforms to a doppelganger Meadows and goes to his airport job. Polly exits from a newly landed plane but rejects the doctor and Jamie, claiming to be Michelle Leopy from Zurich. After at the chameleon kiosk, he meets Samantha Briggs, young Liverpool young Liverpoolian searching for her brother. On a chameleon youth tour, he sent a postcard from Rome, but nobody saw him there. Breaking in, the trio find fake postcards from missing tourists and a monitor of the tour's hangar. The doctor sees Ben and Polly suspended in comatose in a, in a metal cabinet and gets himself caught and frozen by Blade and Spencer. The doctor escapes and goes alone to the hangar and tells Jamie and Samantha to stay. They meet Detect De Detective Inspector Crossland investigating the disappeared chameleon customers and realized the first body was his missing partner, D.I. <coughs> Gaskion. The doctor finds only comatose meadows and returns to demonstrate the crazy gun to the airport com com commandant, who gives him 12 hours to investigate. Blade points the ray gun at Crossland to stop him boarding the next flight, <coughs> next flight and shows him that all the passengers have vanished. Spencer attacks Jamie and Samantha, but they escape. Jamie steals Samantha's ticket and boards. Samantha finds Spencer instead of the airport manager and ties her up for Pinto to duplicate. Meanwhile, the doctor and commandant learn from other airports that chameleon passengers never arrive. Dun dun dun. Blade eliminates the pursuing Aria fighter and diverts Jamie's plan to dock and diverts Jamie's plane up to dock in the vast ceiling craft. When an airsick Jamie emerges from the toilet, he finds the passengers miniaturized in drawers. Blade's assistant, Anne, catches him and traps him in a room with two misshapen aliens. The doctor follows the radar signals to the plane's destination, threatens to remove Alien Meadows' life support black armband, and elicits an explanation. An explosion, da an explosion damaged the alien homeworld, so they want to use 50,000 humans of comatose in orbit as replacements. The doctor uses the Alien Meadows to get at the alien Pinto. She resists and disintegrates, so the real Pinto revives and frees Samantha. She tells the doctor that Jamie left. Jamie meets the director of the aliens, a Crossland copy, who says that the plane will return to the airport for the remaining chameleons. The doctor keeps the, the identities of copied, ca copied staff secret, so the commandant can find their hidden originals. The doctor pretends to be the alien Meadows of Pinto and impersonates her double. They board the last flight to space. The alien Jamie reveals the threat of the doctor, so Blade sends undisguised chameleons to capture them. The, doctors offer, the doctor offers to spare Gavik's original aliens, while, while one on board disintegrates, proving that Samantha found the real staff in parking lot cars. Blade and Spencer kill the, du kill the director and fake Jamie, whose originals revive. Crossland stays behind with the doctor, Jamie, and Pinto return with freed humans. In the airport, Samantha kisses Jamie goodbye. Ben and Polly learn that the day is July 20th, 1966, when they first left in the TARDIS. They leave for home. The doctor reveals to Jamie that the TARDIS has been released from the airport storage and stolen. Yeesh. Well, anyway, let's get some production elements of this story. July 20th, 1966 is noted as the busiest day for the doctor in his time on Earth. The first doctor defeats the war machines in Wotan. As soon as in the synopsis above, the plans of the chameleons have been foiled and the TARDIS has been stolen <coughs> at the beginning of the second doctor and Jamie's adventure against the Daleks. Working for working times for the story include the chameleons. The story had its origins in a planned Hartnell story by 
Hulk Ellis called the big store, in which aliens occupied mannequins in a busy department store, waiting for a human host to possess. The idea was adapted for the Trident era and a setting changed to a metropolitan airport. Some of the faceless ones was filmed on location at Gavrick Airport in March 1967. Heathrow also accepted accepted the production team's offer, but the team chose Gawick as the cost was lower. Doctor Who would later film at Heathrow for a time flight in 1982. As the Macro saw the debut of a new title sequence, the Faceless Ones saw a revised arrangement of the theme music that accompanied this new sequence made in Episode 2. Although contracted and paid up to Episode 2 of Evil of the Daleks, it was decided that Annette Wills and Michael Craze would leave the series after filming for Episode 2 of the, ser- of the serial. Both the Bennett Polly go missing in this episode, and after their eventual rescue in the episode, they only appear in pre-filmed inserts. Pauline Collins was offered a chance to continue playing the character of Sam Briggs as a new companion, but declined the offer. Collins guest starred, years later, as Queen Victoria in Tooth and Claw. Bernard Kay appears as Inspector Crossland. He had previously played Tyler in The Dollar Invasion of Earth and Saladin in The Crusade. He later appeared as Cal- Caldwell in Colony in Space. Wanda Venom and Donald Pickering would later star as husband and wife in Time of the Ronnie. Pickering had previously appeared as Mason in The Keys of Marinus, and Venom would go on to play The Ransom in, in, in Image of the Fendal. Christopher Tranchell would, would return as Leela's love interest, Andred, in The Evasion of Time, and had previously appeared as Roger Colbert in The Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve. Epi- only episodes 1 and 3 of the serial exist in the BBC archives. <clears throat> In addition to the complete version, the archives hold an incomplete print of Episode 1, returned from ABC in Australia in the early 1980s. The Australian Film Censorship Board saw fit to remove the following scenes. Spencer killing Inspector Agascon with a chameleon ray gun, the alien arm emerging from the cupboard, and panning shots of the alien figure seen only from behind at the end of the episode. Also, around 14 seconds of material is missing from Episode 3 due to a damaged print, as stated above. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's it, really. So, yeah, it was like Ben and Polly's last adventure with the Doctor and Jamie was a very, well, interesting one. So, overall, I give the Faceless Ones four Sonic Screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as we take a look at the evil of the Daleks. So, until then, this is Hoobie and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt, when I say run, run, have a versatility of the new trunk low. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic. Alonzi, Geronimo! Well, tests are cool, fences are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>